and I splice onto a thimble. So we're going to actually use the exact same method that uh, that we did earlier with the the open uh, I splice um, to do one onto a thimble. And there there are actually a couple of ways of starting your uh, your I splice. And and the reason why I've shown you the the one that I did is uh, it's probably the, the, the easiest and uh, most uh, effective way to get a really tight eye onto a thimble. Um, some other methods um, that you start your eye slice with will, will kind of leave it a little bit loose so the rope can work around. Uh, which isn't particularly good for chafing on the rope. Um, so the, this method will, will, will give you a nice tight uh, splice onto the thimble and uh, with rope not moving it won't chafe too much and of course the reason for having a, a thimble in the first place is so that if you're you're attaching this rope to say a, an anchor or other kind of steel uh, object the uh, the steel wears on the steel and protects the rope from from chafing so we'll uh, basically start exactly the same way of course, with the last one, you were sort of eyeballing how large the eye wanted to be. With this one, you want your eye to be really no bigger than the thimble. So at the point that we've got this uh, uh, this twine holding the, the line together, that, that's about where where we want the uh, the, the splice to start um, going into the, uh, the 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 standing end. So pull it a little bit tight so it's it's fairly snug and uh, and hold it down if you're having trouble holding it down you can actually uh, put some whipping or even some tape right around this whole uh, base here just to just to hold it solidly so that you have two hands to work with so once again you're, you're going to find that uh, one of the strands is going to be sort of uh, elevated a little bit, one is going to be below a little bit, and one's going to be laying right alongside the other piece of rope. So in this case we'll uh, we'll call the black uh, strand the bit that's laying right alongside. And we want it to uh, to mate up as close as we can to the thimble. And uh, this seems to be the strand here that it's uh, mating up with. So once again we'll be splicing against the lay and just open this up a little bit and we'll put the black guy through twice so basically two two tucks right off the bat for the black one so there's the first it's going to go over its neighbor and under again and there's tuck number two for the black one then we'll go back go down to the bottom one Where the, where the black one uh, is is coming up, that's where uh, that's where where we'll be uh, going down. So he's coming up through here, and we'll come along that way. So that's number two, and the third one is where this red guy is coming up. That's where we'll go through with the uh, the last remaining strand. Uh, being the white one. And we'll just give them a little tug. And you don't have to be too fanatical here about getting it tight. Um, once we have uh, another tuck or two in there, then we'll pull it tight and uh, th there'll be enough friction to uh, uh, to really hold it well. But right now you can already see that it, this is snugged in quite nicely onto the thimble and there's not a whole lot of propensity for it to, to move around. And this is just with one tuck. So we'll, uh, we'll just pick a strand and let's get a second tuck going. So you're always going over top of, uh, over top of the immediate neighbor and, uh, and going through. So the first one, the second one, as this guy's coming up, we're going through. And the last one, exactly the same thing. Uh, you may find that uh, th this rope uh, unwinds itself a little bit. And with this kind of splicing, you actually want to put the twist back into the rope so it, uh, it has its nice uh, cylindrical shape. 
and put it through. And just work them up a little bit tight. There's actually a trick that you can use, uh, especially with uh, with heavier rope that uh, that wants to unravel itself. Um, you, if you use some uh, either hairspray or or uh, styling gel. It sounds kind of funny, but if you uh, unravel the uh, the rope, uh, saturate it with with that stuff, and let it dry, it uh, well, just like your hair does it, it'll it'll be nice and crispy, and it won't unravel. And uh, the nice thing about that stuff is it's water soluble, so you know once you have it outside, the uh, the crispiness will uh, <laughs> will go away. And it it can make uh, make working with uh, with larger ropes a little bit easier. It'll prevent them from unraveling and going crazy on you. So we've got three tucks in, and of course at this point. Um, we'd probably have to, to cut this uh, this little whipping off, and uh, and there's our our eye splice. I've only done three tucks. Of course, you'd probably want at least five for uh, for nylon rope, but uh, that, that's hopefully good uh, good enough for demonstration purposes. We'll be doing a few more like this, so you, you'll see the the pattern a few more times. <laughs>